like homicide before. I'm sick of their eyes. Even when they're dead, they're looking at you and wanting answers. The dead don't need answers. They're dead. Claire, I love Seven Seconds. Thank you. It's really good. Um, I mean, you have a legend like this Regina King. Absolutely. How is it working with her? Was that intimidating at all? Um, no, not at all. She's incredible and very approachable and very friendly and fun and we got on really well and I think there is always an anticipation about working with people like that because you don't know what they're going to be like right but that was very very early put paid to she's just a normal woman who happens to be really good at what she does my son laid in the cold in pain for hours and whoever did this is free Your character is a bit more complicated than most people would like to be. Right. <laughs> Where do you draw inspiration from on her? Um, I think I do actually draw it from the lives of normal people, which, I mean, anytime you watch a reality TV show or when you watch something like Judge Judy, which my mother loves by the way, I so love I Judge Judy. Almost every episode <laughs> that ever exists, and you start to hear people tell stories about their lives, even if your life isn't complicated, you suddenly go, man, people live complicated lies full of you know poor decision making and great decision making and lies and intrigue and upsets and and you know sometimes substance abuse and sometimes it, there's so many things happen to people and actually I think to have a complicated character who sometimes are on her side and sometimes we're not I mean think of like your friends and how much of the time sometimes you're like that's a poor decision that you made or that's a great decision that you made or I don't agree with that I, w I wouldn't do that it's an amalgamation of real people being as complicated as she is, what do you admire most about her? Um, I think how much she grows up over the course of the season. I, I think that she is in a really bad place where we meet her and when we meet her and and that she's kind of given up, but she is forced to and chooses to at various points meet challenges head on and she becomes someone who maybe at the beginning we never thought she could be. The sense that the subject of the show is a very sensitive topic. Mm. Talk about why it's so important that, you know, we have this subject talked about today. Right. It's important because this is what's happening. And there are so many people in this country, and, and I guess looking here at Seven Seconds, specifically the African-American community who live this kind of reality, who live in this fear, who socialize their children to have this fear because it's necessary to do so. And I think validating those people's experience is really important because without any validation of what you're going through, how can you feel invested in the society that you live in? If you think people aren't watching and don't care and don't understand and, and have no empathy, you give up and you don't want to contribute to that society. And on the other side of it, helping people to have understanding and empathy for what's happening to communities that they maybe don't have a lot of contact with is really the only way that we're going to find any kind of solution to a very broken racial geography. You've made some great television shows. What's tell me the fun making TV and making great TV? Um, I mean, acting in general is a fun job, but I'm very lucky to do. TV is, is fun because you get to, um, or interesting because you get to tell a story over a very protracted, protracted period. And, you know, like with Seven Seconds, we have 10 hours to tell this story, and it's not like trying to wrap up a story in two or two and a half hours. Right. And you get to really delve into characters and explore them and test them in different situations. And, you know, when I'm watching a series and I've got 10 hours to get to know someone, I get really invested in, in what they do. Well, what have you learned most about yourself doing Seven Seconds? Um, what have I learned most about myself? Um, I think that I have more agency than I think I do and, and that we as individuals have more power to influence conversations and events than we think we do because it's very easy in mass movements and in, you know, in the run of world politics to be like, well, there's nothing I can do about this and I, you know, this is just going to happen. But if you start to realize that through the little things that you do, whether it's through your job or through your hobbies, that you can contribute to the conversation a little bit, it's very empowering. And I think we all need to hold on to that feeling because the world needs it in this moment. And thank you so much. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Nice to meet you. Hey. No one saw you, right? Hey. You keep your mouth shut. Anyone asks you what you're doing in the park, you tell them your job. It was an accident. Oh.
A white cop and a black kid? I don't fucking act sense anymore. A black teenager was left out in the cold to die. No one cares about Brenton Butler. His life does not factor into the equation of this city. Job. Job's locking up other cops now. I didn't become a cop to break the rules. I'm gonna turn myself in. You're a good cop. You and me, we're a dying breed. And we take care of our own. I want you to think about what kind of father you'd be behind bars. They're not gonna stop until you put them away. You never know what happened. And the only one who might ever know is God. God didn't run my son down in the street and leave him to die. A man did that.